Okay, good morning. It's still morning, right? Um, today, I have the pleasure of sharing with you Mustakis's journey to improve safe passage for wildlife along a major transportation corridor. So essentially, I'm going to focus on two citizen science projects, and I will kind of mention design elements about program design. And I think it's important to note that although these two projects have different scientific goals, and therefore program design, they are both um, striving to inform scientific knowledge and to engage citizens in the generation and understanding of scientific knowledge. So the first project I'll talk about is called Roadwatch in the Pass. And the objective of Roadwatch is actually to identify where wildlife are crossing a busy transportation corridor. And the second project I'll talk about is called Collision Count. And the purpose of collision count is actually, once you know where wildlife are crossing, to actually evaluate the effectiveness of strategies that you've implemented to ensure safe passage. OK, so as I was saying, as I move through this, I'll talk about some of the successes and challenges from a program design perspective. And then at the end, we will have my wisdom on our lessons learned at Mustakis. <laughs> so Mustakis takes um, a citizen science approach to trying to address a conservation challenge, in this case ensuring safe wildlife passage across a busy transportation corridor in southwestern Alberta. I think the picture right here, oh there it is, kind of sums it up for um, the location we're talking about. This is a semi-truck and an elk that were involved in a collision and neither, neither had a very good time of it. The study area that um, these two projects takes place in is along Highway 3 in southwestern Alberta. It's a major transportation corridor, and there's concern that this is a fracture zone to the north-south movement of carnivore populations in particular, and so we're worried that this highway is causing genetic isolation within the Canadian Rocky Mountains. It, there's also a very high degree of wildlife vehicle collisions that occur along this highway, and we're talking most of the large mammal species, um, and that has some uh, regional local population effects. And I think this next slide kind of sums up the perspective from, uh, from wildlife. So the transportation corridor is the red line that runs through the middle here, and those bars represent the number of structures per quarter section, so it's kind of the idea of human development. And so on, both to the north and south of this corridor, we have predominantly crown lands. And so wildlife are moving down the crown lands, crown lands trying to move through this landscape and, and onto crown lands on the other side. So it just kind of gives you an idea of what, what we're, the issue that we're trying to deal with is to help them get across. So why did we take a citizen science approach to addressing or understanding this issue? Well, because Local people in the Crowsness Pass told us this was an issue of concern, that they thought the community would invest time in participating in a project to help us understand where wildlife are crossing, and that we felt we could build a project that um, engaged volunteers in a meaningful way. And you remember Bill talked about a meaningful engagement being really important for the volunteer. So the first project is Roadwatch. It's been very long standing. And it was really simply designed to enable citizens to enter their wildlife observations along Highway 3 through an interactive mapping tool. It has two goals, a scientific goal, which is really to collect, analyze, and communicate the information, highlighting where wildlife crossing locations are along the highway. And then a second goal, and after Tina's presentation, I've mixed up, there's actually two goals here, an educational goal to engage the citizens in the Crowsness Pass regarding wildlife movement and safety issues, and then a second goal is to actually to build a community of concerned citizens. Now, we spent quite a bit of time, because this was Mustakis' first citizen science project um, that we started in 2004, we spent a long time thinking about project development and evaluation. I don't want you to read this next slide, but this is a logic model that we built, and I just want you to pay attention to kind of the impacts. And the idea here is that the impact we want to see is healthier wildlife populations, which to us means improved movement across the highway and reduced wildlife vehicle collisions. And a second really important impact is improved human safety by, through reduced wildlife vehicle collisions. So all your outputs and your outcomes, talking about program design, are trying to lead you to achieve that output, that that, those impacts. And each, the reason these are numbered is because each of these outputs and outcomes is actually linked to an evaluation plan that then describes the metric of how we're going to measure if we've achieved that, that outcome. So Roadwatch has been incredibly successful at achieving its scientific goal. There was over 5,000 wildlife observations generated in a period of five years. Um, we used this to identify in association with data collected by the highway maintenance contractors where wildlife vehicle collision hotspots are. 
And then I call this a, a living data set because everyone knows about it. It's been used in numerous planning processes, some that we've only just finding out about now, like six years later. And probably the accumulation was the use of Roadwatch data in something called the Highway 3 Transportation Mitigation for Wildlife and Connectivity Report, which is a partnership project between the Western Transportation Institute out of Montana State, the Mistakis Institute, and the Yellowstone to Yukon Conservation Initiative, where we convene scientists, and including Roadwatch participants, to come together and to identify where we think the hotspots are along the highway and, so that to, um, and what we think the mitigation needs to be. And the next max shows you the, the accumulation of all this effort uh, is all these little orange dots here show you where we think in the Crow's Nest Pass we need to mitigate for the safe passage of wildlife. And citizens have played a very big role in gathering that data. So from a scientific perspective, goal, goal accomplished. The next goal, if you remember, was around uh, kind of education and outreach. And really we are interested in trying to generate a community of concerned citizens around this issue. And um, we did note in a, in a survey of our participants that there was behavioral change mostly around driving. So in other words, people slowed down now where they're aware where the high collision zones are. But we also found that 80% that reported back to us noted that they had shared information with other community members, which is quite significant because now we have dialogue exchange occurring between community members as a result of being a part of a citizen science project. And then currently, and this is the most exciting part, and there's living proof of it in this room, is that Roadwatch is now not collecting data, but is focused on community outreach, and it's no longer supported by Mistak, and it's actually run by two local volunteers. And those two volunteers are in the room today, Rob and Loretta, if you can wave, Loretta, wave. And uh, they have a poster later today, I really encourage you to go and talk to them. They are now the driving force for outreach around this issue locally. They host citizen science cafes. They screened a road ecology film. They um, have started a postcard campaign and a letter writing campaign. And I have heard from government employees that those postcards and letters have been very important in Alberta transportation moving towards mitigation on Highway 3. So if that's not success, I don't know. I don't know what else. And I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have Rob and Loretta, but that's a, that's a huge success. So some of the challenges that we faced in Road Watch were we have this wonderful, very detailed logic model and evaluation plan, but we didn't really define what success meant. And so I found it challenging. Oh yeah, 80% of the people are talking about this project. Well, what does that mean? How does that translate into affecting your impact? So I, I think there's a little bit of a gap there um, and we need a little bit more work around um, making sure we took it the full, wh what does success mean for the Road Watch program? And the second is this, there's a lot of intangibles and in the uh, benefits that come out of a project like this. And you really need to leave room in evaluation to be able to document those things that you didn't expect. So for example, not long ago, a quite high up government employee told me that they used Road Watch maps to argue for um, the purchase of private land in the Crow's Nest Pass to around mitigation sites. And I was, wow, <laughs> that's phenomenal. But uh, this came up in casual conversation. So how do, we, how do we kind of really show our collective impact in a project like this? I definitely have a lot to learn, still learn around that issue. So now we have our mitigation sites and we're working with Alberta Transportation to try to mitigate two of the sites. And so we have further committed to actually doing the pre and post construction mitigation. And the reason this is so important is because it's pretty unprecedented for Alberta Transportation to go and build an underpass and fencing to allow safe passage when there is not a highway upgrade project planned for the region. So we are now trying to work on influencing policy and a shift in culture within Alberta Transportation based on Highway 3 as a case study. And so Collision Count is actually another citizen science project that is uh, Rob Shoffley from Roadwatch is our local coordinator. He's in the picture there with a uh, deer leg <laughs> from a fence. And the purpose of this project is to get a good understanding of the road kill that are happening right at the mitigation sites that we are working with AT to mitigate. We'll continue this study after they build the mitigation and the idea is then we'll be able to really evaluate the success from a science perspective um, and cost to society perspective of this mitigation. So this is mainly a scientific goal. 
And this is um, quite different from Roadwatch because it's a systematic survey that involves extensive volunteer training, bear smart training, training how to use an app, um, training where the, where the transects are, et cetera. And there's not as many volunteers as there was with Roadwatch. So these are the three sites, um, Rock Creek and Crow's Nest Lake are the two mitigation sites and Iron Ridge is a, is a control site. And this is the, a typical transect that the volunteer walks. This is Rock Creek on the north side and they would simply walk this, this series of transects and every time they see a roadkill observation, they record it using this smartphone app, which Rob has trained them all how to use. <laughs> and I'll just point out that, I'm not gonna go through with all the little bits on the app, except doesn't it look pretty? I think it's really pretty. Uh, but there's this, um, take a photo. I spared you all the photos <laughs> that have been taken through uh, of the roadkill, but that'll be a, I'm looking forward to that project. Uh, so some of the program successes are that we have, this is a new project, so I don't have the same depth of understanding as we do with Roadwatch, but we do have the methodology developed. There is a smartphone app that is, can be, you know, um, placed in other areas. It's not just to use for Highway 3. And there's a volunteer training program that's been developed. Uh, we have successfully engaged volunteers and implemented the program starting in April, so it's quite new. Um, and that we are reporting these observations off site of the right of way, which is really significant because it's gonna help us with a correction factor. Some of the cha challenges are, and this is always a challenge I find with our project, is sustainability of the program. Whew, that's, it's just, it's tough to, to continually fundraise. Long-term monitoring means long-term. <laughs> and funding, you know, a lot of funders don't fund long-term and they like new things. So there's, I, I find there's, there's a disconnect and it's, it's challenging to, to monitor these things, but it's really important that we do. So some of the overall lessons that I have learned through Roadwatch and Collision Count and some other Moustakis projects are to make sure you determine first if there's a meaningful role for volunteers. And again, Bill talked about meaningful being important. You need to understand the motivation of volunteers. We've had a few projects, and I, I, will, I will look at Gwendolyn and say where we are science deficient or, or you know, deficient in our understanding of the volunteers' need, and we haven't designed the program in an effective way that motivates volunteers, and I think it's really important to stand back and step in their shoes and think of all the different reasons they would be motivated to contribute to your project. Um, and then also, how can you engage them, again, in a meaningful way? I um, think it's really important to take the time up front to develop clear program goals and identify your expected outcomes and impacts. And I'm really excited for Tina Phillips' presentation about evaluation because I think we have a lot to learn um, on how to evaluate really what this project has contributed to highway, improving highway safety along Highway 3. And then defining success, we didn't do a very good job of that and I was left wondering, well, it seems successful to me, but I never really defined what success meant for these metrics. Um, and then determine how you're gonna evaluate. And the last slide is just uh, acknowledging those wonderful funders that continue to support us year after year on these, these citizen science efforts. Thank you.